Hello. Howdy. I didn't, I really didn't expect you to say howdy. You, you're not, you didn't seem in a howdy mood and then you just whipped that out. That was a fun little surprise. Those Texans always whipping out their howdies. That is whipping true. them out right and left. Actually, Are you even not, from Texas, you're not, not that, whipping out your hardy? Not, How, not hardy. Hardy. Your hardy. That's a different. It's a little, no way, hardy. Nice. I'm, still in, I'm still in the pirate mode. I mean, that's valid. Mm-hmm. I know how to get out of the pirate mode. It's hard. Just don't. <laughs> Just update your bookstagram. This is an exclusively pirate romance <laughs> page. That's a you great plan. be reading nothing else. Honestly, I'd probably make a go of it for a while. Be pretty good. <laughs> there are... There's no shortage. No. There may be no. not as many good ones. That's true. That is true. But I read I read one, the three hour one that I talked about that was on my TBR, um, and uh, it was really bad. And at the end, they were like, "Our friend, our, no, our friend Benjamin, our friend Benjamin Franklin." And I was like, "How did we get here? How are you friends with Benjamin Franklin?" <laughs> I was like, are, "You're a- are you not?" <laughs> I I guess I wish I was. I, I was. I had been alive at the same time as Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> I definitely would have been friends with him. It was just, it was not great. And then Benjamin Franklin entered the chat. And I was like, how did we get here? You were only three hours, an hour and a half sped up. How (laughs) did we end at this moment? It was odd. But the narrator, Tim Campbell, always a babe. So, mixed mixed bag of nuts there. Narrators who are babes. Mm -hmm. This audiobook had a really good narrator. I liked him a lot. It was really good. He was great. Um, his name was something Meadows. I don't know. I commented on another post recommending him to someone. His name is is that is not the one. God damn it. Jean Valjean. What did I recommend? Wait, it was the weird one that I didn't like, but I recommended the narrator. <sighs> Mark Meadows is the name of the narrator. He did a really good job. And I guess that really just brings us right in into our episode where we have recently, quite recently, just read The Rake. <laughs> Some of us a matter of minutes ago. <laughs> we uh, this is a, this is an old school school lesson on The Rake by Mary Jo Putney. It was first published. I forgot to think of a lesson again. I oh, it's so forget. easy. This it's so we're going to go classic 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 lesson on this one. Okay. You you you'll get the picture. I believe. I'll, I believe. I'll, you. I'll paint you such a vivid picture that you'll have okay. no choice but to hang it on your wall. Wow, that's it's, confidence. I mean, it's it it's right up there with um the men in want of a what you call it, men in possession of a thingy and want of a wife. Man in possession of. Why don't I know the line? I know it a lot. I, I've known it every day of my life. A single man else. in possession of a good fortune must be in, mo- in want of a wife. There we right? go. This one, yeah, this one is like second. Okay, I believe that. you. I Thank just you. wasn't thinking about it. Thank you. Other than like stop drinking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that feels like the easiest answer because like half of this book was just this man's struggling with alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> That is a lesson, and he did learn it. <laughs> he and learned that lesson. Yep. Yep. And that's so true. I would say, like, almost 75% of the book. It that's was true. definitely different than I thought it was going to be. I, It gave me big West Ravenel oh, energy. Yeah. It's like, it gave me, like, the inner intermittent mm-hmm. time between mm-hmm. Cold-Hearted Rake and Devil's Daughter. Like, yeah. His reform time. I mean, technically, he was like reformed earlier than that, but yeah, it's really what he's doing during yes, Rake. Exactly. By the end of that one, he's already yeah, yeah. pretty solidly. He's on the but yeah. It's like if way. you were like, I wanted to spend the time with West. Mm-hmm. Here you go. But yeah. also, if West was even more traumatized than yes. he already was, and into a really tall woman instead of a, a not super tall redheaded woman. That. I that's mean, really that's, the only difference I'm seeing. And her kids aren't her biological kids. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. just other kids. I was definitely happy 
to have the kids in there. When I heard that she was, when she was a guardian, I was like, yeah. The littlest one? William. William. I I love him. I know. Was he the one that brought the carrot to the horse? Yeah. I love him. (laughs) William had some lessons to learn, too. Yeah, um, right. maybe don't bring carrots alone. Also, to a, Pete. Actually, I love all course. the kids because yeah. Peter being fully prepared to square uh-huh. up with a whole man, be like, "If I thought you would accept a challenge from someone my age, <laughs> he was so cute." And then um, Meredith, I liked her. I was a little bit worried at the beginning that she was just yeah. Gonna, yeah. gonna throw herself consistently at that at that man, but no, nope. she had her own little hottie. And we I got three that. full. On we did. romances. We did. I mean, they were like mini romances, the other two, but they were cute. They, got, they were nice. Yeah. They got a I little s- time. Did. I feel like they, all of them kind of got a little bit of a POV time. At least yeah, I know the. They did. Yeah. So. It was only a couple of scenes for each of them, but mm-hmm. neither of them had complicated. Mm-mm. Like, they just kind of fell in love and decided to get married. It wasn't. It was very cute. It wasn't crazy. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. I liked. I liked the maid. Yes. I really liked their. Their little and then just the relationship. His serv- yeah, it was that was really cute. And I think it definitely added a little bit of levity mm-hmm. into some of the, the darker parts. Yeah, it was funny. I had a lot of quotes I wrote down that made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I had a really good time. I definitely looked for the audiobook of book one, which isn't available at like any library. I have to buy it from Audible. So I have to Rude. decide if I want to do that or just read the book. And then I think the – because there's like a half – the bargain is like 0.5 in this one, then number mm-hmm. one, like a Regency series. That's an Audible exclusive, mm. which I know since Black Friday is coming up like kind of soon, I wonder if um, Audible will do another one of their like giant sales. So I may wait and kind of see there. Like I should start making a list of all the ones that I've been looking for. Um, and then there's apparently Dangerous to Know. I don't know where that one fits in. Yeah, I don't know. In this series. But I definitely would read more. Oh, Caroline. Innocent yeah. Caroline Hanscom. Yeah, the... Books, Captain Richard. I'm very confused by the... Um, uh, the first book. The The premise of it is... is it, it sounds like it sets up a romance between this... I don't know who Jason Kincaid is and Caroline... But I knew from the beginning of this book that that wasn't going to work out because she's obviously married to the Earl of whatever, isn't it? The the cousin who bequeaths. Yeah, the, I the I just kind of thought that that was his name. Nope. Rip me. <laughs> no, it's because if you go later in the description, it says she's finding a soulmate in Richard. Richard Davenport. Right. Who she goes on to marry, which we know because we just read it or read them being married. So oh. I guess there's another romance. Oh, so that up? one, so that dangerous to know must just be like an addendum to the bargain. What thirteen hundred and twenty three pages? What the hell? How well, is this? I don't know about that one. I was talking I about either. number one. But... I know, but it, it has Captain Richard and Caroline too in it. Like oh, it has I, those same look, characters. I well, I think I saw something about like it's a full length book plus a novella or a oh. short story. That could make maybe so it's maybe book one and then some random. I'm I'm confused about the series. And yeah, the these are all very confusing. I don't know what's going on there. Mm-mm. Well, because then in in the rake, um, in his past, the woman who the friend of his like friend, the friend's sister, who came to him pregnant, mm-hmm. um, she married a doctor, and so I like googled mary joe putney like physician and there is a physician book it's it's a different one but the heroine's name is this is different so i didn't know if she was like having like assuming a secret identity with that one because it, it, it sounded like it could have been the plot for that because like that sounded like a whole book in itself i was like well i'd read that i find doctors hot um so she does have a physician one i just don't know if like it's a it's not always a saint i don't know if because I think her name was Sarah in this book. She may yeah. be either hiding her identity or... Or just a different... Yeah. Because, like, they, she has, a like, a shattering danger in her life. So it could be that. Who knows? Uh, if anyone knows a guide to reading Mary Jo Putney and or a family tree, which I probably could maybe Google. I thought I could Google a Beverly, a Beverly Jenkins family tree, and that does not exist. 
Yeah, you would think that existed. Right? Which is rough. Well, um, I don't know. Me neither. But yeah, I, I had a really good time with it. I was like teetering between like four and five. And then by the end, I, I decided with five because I thought that that blog was cute. And it was a really good story. Like, so it's probably like four and a half mm-hmm. um, in my my mind but i like did not want to stop that's why our pirate episode launched late is because i just was listening to the audiobook and i didn't want <laughs> i didn't want to edit our episode i wanted to just keep listening to it so that's why if anyone wanted the tea <laughs> so yeah it had me it got me it was a good i i don't know how long this episode is going to be because i literally have nothing interesting to say yeah um I think I would have liked a, a little bit more from her. I think it's interesting when this book ori- – I don't remember when it was originally published, but it's titled – 1998. Wow. That book's yeah. as old as I am. I know, um, right? It's our, both of our birth years. Love that. It was originally called The Rake and the Reformer. Oh. And then I don't know when, but it got dropped to The Rake, um, which, I mean, admittedly does make sense because he, he felt yeah. like more of a main character to me. Um, yeah. She, I mean, she had her issues. That was actually the one thing that did bother me, was her issues were dumb. <laughs> Not the, <coughs> the like, self-consciousness. Yeah. It was the entire, the fact that she heard one kind of rude comment. Yeah. And then ran away from home for 12 years. I, I know she's like, I regretted leaving, but then I couldn't yeah. come back. And I got that. I was like, okay, fair enough. Because mm-hmm. relatable queen. I also would be like, nope. I gotta stick with it now. Uh, I've already committed to this course. Yeah. Commit to it, uh, as Lightning McQueen learned from Doc. I think by the end, they kind of boiled it down to, I think on the surface it was because of the comment, but it was really her father's reaction and how hurt she was that he would, like, I mean, I know disregard. that's why she left, but she still, yeah. like, dreamed repeatedly i mean that is true it was still like a very big part of her psyche yeah and i guess i just feel like if it had happened when she was like 12 or something Mm -hmm. or it was like i mean i guess it is something she experienced her whole life but i always find it more interesting when somebody hears something like that in their childhood and like Mm -hmm. latches on to it right because i'm like girl you were what 18 Mm -hmm. and you heard one mean comment and we're like i'm audi 500 or (laughs) five whatever you know i'm like yeah i just i feel like i needed something a little bit more tragic for me to fully respect her Interesting. it's fine i got I over think it the thing that i was least into was the random murderous man um <laughs> I, mean, I, wasn't, I didn't mind that i was kind of just like how much of a shadow is this gonna cast and it didn't it the reason why it doesn't bother me now is because like it ended on a very metal note <laughs> like yeah. it was a very like ball to the wall like ambush battle scene that just kind of was went very hard and i was like okay i guess this well, we needed and it happened him. at like 60 percent so i was like okay yeah i guess well, we're we, just gonna we needed him to be murderous in order yeah. to set the fire to get her under the same yeah. roof yeah And also, we needed him, I guess, for Reggie to figure out. Which, by the way, Reggie, an unfortunate name for a hero, but we moved on. Um, Which was, didn't they, like, describe it, too? Like, they were like, Reggie's would never... Well, yeah, he says they're either villainous or... I don't remember what the other thing is, but, like, idiotic, I think, was the the vibe. Reggie and Reginald and Reg, none of them. Yeah, where he was like, I would rather be villainous than Mm -hmm. whatever the other, like, like, invisible option was. He should have had like a hot middle name. I mean, or his, that like, should have friend was named, or not his friend, but the friend of the Earl was named Rafe. There was Rafe right there. Rafe the Rake. I mean, really? Okay. Well, that's perfect. Well, no, no, Rafe. I think that's perfect. No, I think that's perfect. Like Rafe the Rake. Yeah, I wish that like he would have been so emo that his middle name would have been Reginald, and that like he would have had a really hot first name, but he just really had to go by Reggie because he really was an emo goth child. Um, but then she found out his real name and then called him by something nice and then that happened look it's fine because moaning reggie with a hot name 
Yeah, that's so true. Moaning we got, Reggie. like, barely any sex scenes anyway, so. It's, that was also like, disappointing. Yeah. I mean, he was a pretty notorious rake. I would have. Yeah, it always makes me laugh when they're, like, his yeah. prowess. He's renowned. The, uh-huh. the women, the he his revenge on that woman was having sex with her once and then never again. Like, <laughs> like he was so good. And then she was like, you're yeah. going to get, like, a, a, a cracked door. God, so now that we're talking about it, because I think, because by the end, I was, like, feeling the feelings, like, by the epilogue. Mm-hmm. But these are all the issues I had with it. And now I'm like, well, what if it, what if it was four stars? I don't know. Writing books is hard. <laughs> I know. Because I, I was really, like, leaning, but I was like, fuck it, five. But I feel like it Fair may enough. be. I mean, live your life. I know, but I don't. A lack of sex scenes is not, I, it just makes no, me it, laugh. No, that, that it... was just, like, a, a part of it. Because I was like, I definitely expected him to live up. I think Mary Jo Putney, at least based on the reviews of a couple of her other books that I was pretty, looking at, she's pretty not – there's just not a lot of sex in her books. That makes which sense. Which is fine. There's yeah. – you know. Yeah. It just yeah. is funny when one of the characters is, like, mm-hmm. sexually skilled, gifted, yeah. if you will. <laughs> yeah. And then we find out she has a, a past, too. She wasn't a virgin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was not how I expected that to, to fold out. Thought that was a nice little twist. Mm-hmm. If you're a reader and or curious of what the twist was, you can either skip ahead like a minute or listen. Um, if there's a, I mean, it'll be a spoiler. Um, basically, she just like left home at like 18. Was at an inn. Some drunk dude like made a pass at her and she's like, why not? And then had sex with him and then left. And that was the 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 main thing but then she was like really craving like she was a very like someone who was very interested in sex and like interested in um like passion and stuff so that was kind of part of her thing was being kind of resigned to her fate of never having that and having like one bad experience and thinking that she's not you know um passion worthy or marriageable and too tall um and then obviously Reggie comes along and he's broken. <laughs> and she helps him see that he needs to heal himself before he can do much. Because he only makes out with her when he's drunk. And then she has a whole, like her whole backstory is that the guy said the, or the drunkard took her virginity when he was drunk um, and all of that. So that was also another trigger. That we didn't know until like seventy percent, maybe pretty late. Yeah, it was pretty late because yeah. that came after the metal ambush <laughs> moment. <laughs> I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like this man, and then the random bit with Stella when she was like, "I'm gonna." If it felt kind of Lord of Scoundrels esque, where you had like kind of oh, the yeah. uh, the scheming, but then it kind of didn't go anywhere. Like I thought Stella was going to like come back I into the picture she after she might come back. No, my initial lesson was gonna was gonna be the phrase that morning's ambush implies another ambush is yet to come, um, because I thought Stella was gonna ambush them, but she didn't, so that can't be the lesson, guys. But just know that normally there's one ambush, another is close to follow in historical romance, because things get crazy. Um, yeah, so that was kind of disappointing. Stella. <laughs> Uh, but yeah yeah I guess I just was really fascinated by the his struggle on his battle with alcohol and he definitely like it was definitely drawn out like one step forward is like two steps back two steps back a lot of the time um to where I think like I was just more invested really in like the story than really even the romance Mm -hmm. I would agree yeah yeah like it was very very well written um and the audiobook again like i thought the narrator was really good so like that kind of also just made it easier to kind of just like get lost in it i didn't love i mean i don't know much about alcoholism i mm-hmm. felt like the way that it resolved where he was i mean I, it did kind of change yeah. my mind later in the book where initially he, he like runs out to the lake and it's just mm-hmm. like everything has changed i don't crave alcohol anymore i was like yeah what do you mean you don't crave? because i can see like a turning point where it becomes something that he knows mm-hmm. even when he does crave it he has the strength you know what i mean like yeah 
I could see a turning point, but the fact that he's like, I don't even want it anymore. I was like, well, that doesn't really feel like how, a true to addiction to yeah. me. Yeah. Although he does have at the end the thing where he almost drinks and mm-hmm. then doesn't. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so. he had the – his, like, men- – or his godfather told mm-hmm. him that he had, like b- – both his father and his godfather had struggled with alcohol and it, like, ruined temporarily at least both of their marriages. And they were both, like – at least – I know his father was abusive. I don't know if the godfather – if he was borderline abusive or if he had ever, like, done any, like, hit any they of his family. didn't say anything about it. I think it was yeah. just that she so was, I think like, he was just gone Oh, well, she time. said – that he said that his wife had told him – that his kids were afraid of him because afraid they never knew what mood he was going gotcha. to be in. So I don't know if that was, like, abuse or just, like... Gotcha. Um, so then the godfather basically was like, you know, I tried to stop and thought I could, um, you know, only drink one. And then if I would have one, then it would just turn into several. And, then, like, I just had to, like, be cold turkey. Um, and then he, like, said that when it got, like, to rock bottom, he prayed for i guess just like relief from the alcohol or something um and that's basically what reggie turned to at the end after trying like going through a few different methods of like thinking that he could do it and then it was after that where he was like oh i just don't don't need it but that way it was after he he almost um hurt william um so I do think that was at least like a trigger for him to like realize, but yeah, it definitely felt like there was just like a snap of your fingers. Yeah, which is and odd because it, was... it wasn't a religious. No, it, it was the opposite actually mm-hmm. because she makes a point of saying that she doesn't yep. believe in the God in the traditional sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was like, why are you? Re- <laughs> I'm confused. It was, it, it was definitely yeah, you're right. Like definitely in context of the book. It felt more random than I think it would, like, in another one written differently. Yeah, Yeah, I don't quite know what happened, like, in his mind, like, after that to kind of, like, get him to just be like, okay, I don't even need it anymore. Because, like, he felt that way, like, earlier that he wasn't needing it. And then he had a celebration drink with his friend. And that's what triggered um, a huge, like, bender. And then William had, like, entered the stables to give his, like, horse a carrot, and the horse Bucephalus was... Which is a sick name for a horse. Yeah. He was, like, very angry and startled and going to basically, like, kill William. So then Reggie is, like, hungover, drunk, still goes and rescues William, basically, like, has to, like, stab the horse with a pitchfork glancing blow i don't think the horse the horse no, is the fine horse is fine yeah um and then he like gets william out like shakes him and is like blah, blah, blah. and then he's gonna hit him and then he stops and then he's like oh i'm turning into my father and then like all like the memories come back of his father being very abusive when he was drunk and he put him into like a either a coma or broke his like he he was like tossed across the room at like four like he didn't have any memories before four um which was before his father got sober and then that all came back because he repressed it all. Um, so he was, like, dealing with that. And then he punched and, a wall a bunch of times, yeah. which made me laugh because I had literally just seen a TikTok the other day of a girl being, like, a man in this book just punched a hole in the wall and I forgave him. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, like, relatable. Men in fiction can do a lot that I will forgive, that I will not forgive a man in real life. That is so true. I mean, I he, might if he was struggling with addiction. To yeah, be fair. I would cut some slack there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like this one, because I mean, at one point he even like kicked his dog. Um, yeah, when he was he drunk, did. and I was like, "Bro," um, I feel like he wasn't as sorry about that as he should have been. <laughs> I feel like he should have groveled to that dog. She was too nice. It is funny to me that I was a little more <laughs> upset about the kicking the dog than I was <laughs> him definitely cornering. No, uh, Alice and like low-key about to rape her yeah I mean, listen, I, we it, don't know that he would have gone that far but yeah listen it's fucked up but i can't be changed I, the dog hurt more i think it's that. because she can it's it's because it always makes me sad when i like accidentally step on an animal's foot yeah, or something you and can't apologize so can't, you can't apologize and they can't reason and understand yeah. like oh it was an accident they just like mm-hmm. you hurt them and you're like no 
no. I didn't yeah. mean it. And you don't understand that I didn't mean it. And you're going to forgive me, but do I deserve it? Yeah. Exactly. That's how that's how this felt. Like, because he didn't remember. And then he, like, she had to tell him. And I'm like, that should have been the first thing he thought about. <laughs> he wakes up. Like, the freaking meme where he wakes from the coffin. The WWE yeah. or whatever MMA wrestler guy. And then just turns his head. Is like, oh, my God. I was mean to my dog. He should have, like, made her a dog pie or something. I think there needed to be more groveling there. I do. <laughs> I don't think Nemesis would have understood groveling. No, I but she would have Nemesis understood having a happy to bomb-ass pie. <laughs> I think she would have enjoyed that. She was cute. She was, like, a collie who couldn't collie <laughs> order. <laughs> she couldn't do her job. She and he he saved job, her. But that's okay. Sometimes <sighs> we just can't do jobs, guys. That's so true. That's so true. I'm not built for that. As a side note, no. every animal in this book had a sick name. Mm-hmm. Attila, Nemesis, and Bucephalus. Yeah. My little classics loving heart ate that up. Pretty metal, metal house, too. <laughs> mm. Attila for a cat is very funny. And then the dog was scared of the cat, and they were cuddling by the end. I was like, yeah. That's that the content. How my dog and cat are actually. Mm-hmm. My dog is still a little like. Mm. I feel weird about this cat, and the cat is like, "Hello, I'm here to lay on top of you now." Aww. But also attack him sometimes. Because his tail like wags, that. and he's uh, like, yeah. uh, it's a moving thing. Gotta swat at it. I have no choice. <laughs> it's an ethnic Sad. weakness, as my parents would say." <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. It's just dog <sighs> and cat energy. It's just mass hysteria. Dogs and cats living, living together. together. God. I want to watch <sighs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> and this one, ghosts were busted. But the emotional kind of ghosts. Slay. Thank you. If you want a book in which real ghosts and emotional ghosts are busted, Brightest Star in Paris by Diana Biller. Yes, that is true. Mm-hmm. As a side note, I read that book before I had read any of Diana Biller's. Well, she'd only ever read, yeah. I think the only the other Widow one of was Rose Widow House. of Rose House. But I hadn't read that or heard anything about it. And I read The Brightest Star in Paris on Neck Alley when I was for it was very, very early in my romance mm-hmm. reading. And it the the description was just was about not. like, you know, battling ghosts from her past type <laughs> vibes. And then a ghost enters the chat. And, you're and then like, a huh? real ghost entered the chat. And I have never been so shocked and delighted. I was like, a ghost? A real <laughs> what? A real ghost? It was so exciting. Oh, yeah. And then it turns out the whole other book was also there were ghosts. And, and then I, was, I still haven't read it, but the family yeah, that shows one, up in that book. Because those two are connected. Because I read The yeah. Widow of Rose House first. And yeah. then The Bread is Star in Paris. Um, Because I thought that they were all connected to the Hotel of Secrets. No. But that one had no paranormal ghosties and or evil spirits. Um, yeah. The Widow of Rose House would be good for the fall. fall yeah. Season. I'm hopefully planning on reading it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I liked I liked those two books. I definitely liked Hotel of Secrets better than them because that one was a little bit lighter. I, I was a little bit sad. Like both of the other two yeah. like made me sad. Um, But she writes such a good simp hero. That's so like true. the the dude in the in the widow of rose house he was just there to please her sexually and hunt some ghosts i mean and i was with it <laughs> i think about the scene in this brightest star and pit because i love that book i will mm-hmm. eat up anything with a dancer heroine if i'm being honest yeah. um but benedict the doctor the american doctor he was a doctor i He's love an american doctors. doctor mm-hmm. um and when they – I remember not a ton about that book besides my delight at realizing the ghosts were real. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do remember them being in their family's attic and nobody else being there. And she basically is like, I want you to make me scream. And then they make out really hard in the attic and then they have sex. And he's like, I have got, I can do this all day. I'm not stopping until you scream. You said you wanted to scream. <laughs> scream. And I was like, ah, I'm screaming. <laughs> Benedict, my goodness. I remember that. I didn't know you had it mm. in you. I forgot he was a doctor, though. I do love a good doctor. That's what well, I call sure, because he's traumatized from being a doctor in the Civil War. Mm. As I would be, too. 
as I think anybody mm-hmm. would be who did that. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah, Diana, she's just, I wonder what her next book's going to be. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that, like, because I'm very used to, you know, like, Berkeley and, like, Avon, like, churning out, you know, books and series, like, very fast. And then, like, some other publishers. And that's not, like, true for, like, all the books at those places, but a lot of them do. And so, like, when there's, like, a book from another publisher, like, The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, like, just got the second title and cover reveal. Um and I'm like, it's taken so long. Maybe mm-hmm. not like in the grand scheme of things, but in relation to like what I'm used to, I was like, oh my gosh, it's been forever. Um, and I just read those, I guess, as early copies as well. So it like makes the issue even even more prominent. But um, I hope our next one comes out soon because I'm ready to go. <laughs> Rereading the scenes from Hotel of Secrets for our Speak Now episode was life changing. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. I, I also so did like good. that book. I just something about a virgin spy who everyone knew was a spy, <laughs> and he was just so dedicated to Spies both being a spy forever. and giving her orgasms. That's a great musical, by the way. It's on YouTube if anybody wants to watch it. What's it called? Spies are forever. Oh, they are forever. It's They'll last forever. Really excellent. Nice and funny. That's the point. It's a comedy, but also very kind of sad. There's a twist at the end where you're like, oh, oh. why am I gutted? <laughs> sad. Also, there's a fun little trio with the the spy and the Russian uh, main character who you think are obviously going to fall in love. Mm. Are his, his mom is like really pushing them. So you have the two of them singing on one side, being like, this is really awkward, and I feel like I should kiss you, but also this is really awkward. And then the mom is on the other side of the stage, singing about how badly she wants them to make out. (laughs) It's excellent. Oh, that sounds fun. Is it like a Broadway or just like a YouTube production? So it's just a random It was the same company that did a Harry potter musical oh okay they've they've done other shows one of which i gotcha. did in college um oh. but this one was a i mean it was like a professional theater i think but it was mm-hmm. their production company and they they recorded gotcha. it so that's cool tis on youtube, you. on YouTube. would recommend the songs nice. are bangers and now I have Spies Are Forever stuck in my head. None of this is related to the rake. I just have nothing really left rakes, to say about the rake. Rakes are forever, guys. So true. What Which is a fuckboy if not a That modern is so rake? true. Which gets us to yeah. the, the time old lesson. Reformed rakes make the best husbands. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> they mention it in the book. They so do. I'm they it. do. Yeah. They say like, it. I wasn't going to do it. Or like, I wasn't going to like go that route and then i wasn't ambushed a second time which kind of made me sad but i feel like rakes really do make the best husbands i can't argue with that they do yeah they do so that's the takeaway i it was like definitely just a different just a different book Mm -hmm. um very this is me trying coded i should just could not stop hearing that song when i was listening to it because his whole family uh we didn't talk about that his whole family died of smallpox well his mother and sister died of smallpox and then his father was literally away racing home died in a carriage accident uh You're reggie also happy. yeah reggie also had ch- chicken pox reggie also had smallpox chicken um <laughs> He survived, and then his whole family was dead. And his first thing coming onto this estate was to get everyone inoculated against smallpox, um, which was also a lesson. Shortly before <laughs> – that's a good lesson. <laughs> get your smallpox vaccination. Which um, is honestly relevant now. It shouldn't maxed, be. But it's, it's so maxed. fucking relevant. That's the lesson. Yeah. Um, um, well, he also then I bathed some sheep. <laughs> that was that was funny he gained respect because he had always wanted to bathe some sheep growing i up. love a man who's like get me in there with some sheep <laughs> get me in get put me, me in coach put me in coach i'm ready to bathe some there sheep was a line and shear i don't some think sheep. i wrote it down which is unfortunate because it made me laugh about 
he's like, despite their stupidity, he'd yep. always like sheep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why do you have to come for the sheep like that? I like um Taylor Swift has her quote, uh, sheep yeah. are impossible to reason with. I mean, that's so true. Another lesson. <laughs> Another lesson for us all. Yeah. Yeah. I like I enjoyed him. I, he was different. He wasn't like I thought he was gonna remain a jerk for longer than he was, or like I thought he was gonna be more resistant to being head of the household and like having his estate. Um, but he had basically like, he was a, was it a King scholar? Like he was very smart and like a very good match for the heroine, um, which I didn't see coming, which I thought was nice. Well, and you have the whole thing where she's like, what, why do you know so much about a state kid? Yeah. He's like, well, I did spend my whole life expecting to inherit. <laughs> You're like, oh, Rip him. that's a bummer. Yeah. Um, his, um. I can't remember why, for some reason, his cousin inherited. Uh, it's a thing. It's because, well, the cousin was the son of his his uncle. That's the relationship. The son was, I mean, the uncle was the earl, and so he had two sons. So then he thought, but the sons were gone. So he was the next that's heir why. presumptive. Gotcha. But then they found the long lost son. Do we know where they were? Uh, Did they say that? I don't remember. They might have. Uh, I don't remember what they said about the other son. Well, I think I, one one died. Okay, well then that's what happened to him. <laughs> and then I don't know what was going on with Richard. With the, just yeah. he had a different name and was in the army. So I I don't remember yeah. if they explained that. They I probably mean, did, and I just because he was married to was Caroline, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, they were they were compelling characters. Confused me though. <laughs> Makes yeah. no damn sense. <laughs> so true. Um, so yeah, if anyone knows like how, in, in what order to read these and like how they all fit together, please enlighten us. Wait, I so lied to you. I do have a lesson. She has a lesson, guys. Always be the sacrificial penguin. <laughs> There's the scene where uh, he finds the treatise on alcoholism in mm. the library and he locks himself in there all day. And she mm -hmm. comes back and everybody's awkwardly standing outside in the hallway and they're like, can you go in and check on him? We haven't seen him all day. Like, he's just in there. And she goes in and is like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, did you know? The penguins, when they're they will like jump up and down on the ice to test for sharks, and then they will toss one penguin. They will shove one of the penguins into the water, and if the penguin like lives, they'll all jump into the water. Um, and so he was like, "I take it you're the sacrificial penguin," and she was like, "I've been called many things in my life, <laughs> but never a sacrificial penguin." And it made me laugh. That's so true sacrificial penguin which is just an excellent phrase mm -hmm. so Very evocative <laughs> i love penguins how did they survive evolution that's so true because they kind of just waddle <laughs> i mean i know dance. they're like designed to be i mean they're great in the water but every time you see videos of penguins yeah. not in the water and they're just like falling off of things and they're so round they are so round and they dig tunnels with spoons so true. So true. Mm -hmm. they maybe that's hands. what they were. Yeah. Maybe that's what they were. They proposed to their mates with little rocks. That's so true. What book Penguins. is it that that's a reference? There is a book uh, where they talk about that. Like a romance. Penguins? It's not your Laura Kinsale? No, no, no. Well, there. that's also an excellent one where they raise a baby penguin together. Um, mm -hmm. But no, there's one where they talk about the, the penguin bringing his mate rocks. No, I can't remember. I'll probably never discover what it is, um, but I'll try I to know, Google it and find I out. I know Get the Off My Lawn is geese, does, or swans, not No, geese. no, no, there's like a so reference where the hero is talking about penguins giving each other rocks, rocks. as, and then that becomes a thing. <sighs> I'll probably never know, but if anyone knows what I'm talking about, I would appreciate it. We would all appreciate it, because now I'm... Now I'm curious. 
I feel like it has to have been a contemporary, but I can't guarantee it. Mm. Is it like a Chloe Lise? Nope. I don't think. I'm going to keep listing. Actually, maybe. It could have been that one, but I've only read one of her books. There's a hedgehog in that one. Sure. But again, it's not a real penguin in the book. It's just a... It's just a reference. I'm There's just trying to think of the characters in that my brain. Know. Yeah, I don't know. Speaking you of know, hedgehogs, like they also the referenced a hedgehog in this one because yeah. when she was pestering him, she said she was acting like a rabid hedgehog. And I said, <laughs> Karen, Karen, God, I can't talk. <laughs> Caroline was like, aha, it's me. I see myself. And not only the person named Caroline, but also the rabid hedgehog. I see myself in the rabid hedgehog <laughs> reference. So true. So true. Nice. Well, marry a rake, be a sacrificial penguin. I don't got much else. I thought it was a very nice book. Yep. Um, I'll definitely be reading more. Hopefully, hopefully like them as well. Uh, I don't know what our next old school school book is. Take the um, old gander. I just looked at it and now I've forgotten. It is the an unwilling bi- oh my god I can't talk an unwilling bride by George. <laughs> oh, 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 oh part of your world oh by Abby Jimenez have you ever heard of of, of penguin love stones what a penguin love mm-hmm. stone when a male likes a female he finds a perfect stone and he brings it to her if she likes it she puts it in her nest and that's it they're paired for life Brian watched Liz taking an order at another table but talked to us and your point. My point is the penguin's not picking her mate because he's the one who has the best rock. It might look that way, but she's not. She's taking the rock because the male she wants is uh, because the male she wants the most is offering it. Sometimes what you have to give is enough, even if it's a rock instead of a diamond. I mean, true. I really it was really going to bug me if I couldn't remember what that was that you pulled that out of your ass way faster. I Googled a few different key phrases to try to figure that one out. And it came up as like a Goodreads quote. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I'm I'm happy for you because that Thank never you. works out so well for me. Yeah, that was heard. that was gonna stress me out. Um, yeah, the point is that well, he's really knows. poor and she's really well. He's not poor, but he's like a you know he works in his hands. Joe. He runs a B and B and mm. is a carpenter because he's hot. But he's also the mayor and he's also a carpenter. Oh. Oh, and my. she meanwhile is like trace. a super rich nepo baby surgeon, and he's like, oh, uh. I could never give her. And his friend is like. Penguin can on another that. rock. <laughs> Again, I'm like, if I had a hot Nepo baby surgeon wanting to wife me up, I don't think I'd be like, oh. Well, sorry. she didn't want to wife him up. He was a one oh. night stand initially. Oh. Initially. Rip to Mr. B and B Mayor. No, it's fine. It worked out. It's a romance novel. Carpenter. It was a great oh, yeah. book, by the way. Nice. Anyway. Sacrificial uh, Penguins. Sacrificial Penguins, An Unwilling Bride by Joe Beverly is next. Ah. I don't know what that's about, so we're all in this crazy <laughs> ride together. Uh, I think, I don't think I've read a Joe Beverly before. I have not. I, I own have one, one of them and I'm looking at it right now. Something Wicked. That's that's about it. Is, I think it's Lord of My Heart. Ooh. It's the one that I have. Well, that's a good title. But yeah. Well, we did a shitty job of convincing you to read The Rake by Mary Jo Putney. But we talked for two and a half hours about pirates a few Look, days ago. you win some, you lose some. That's so true. I only have so and many you get words some rocks. in my brain. Yeah. Words are like rocks. They're hard to come by unless they're uh, outside. That but we're inside, so it feels so like true. your most solid Simple. words are like rocks they're solid <laughs> i don't know it doesn't feel like your best simile either <laughs> i don't i don't know another one words are like rocks i don't know why we're heroes doing... heroes are like rocks that can be gray sometimes ogres are like onions <laughs> well that one's what we all know they can do it why can't i make one with a rock <laughs> so hard Making similes is hard. That's the lesson. Like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it was a circuitous path. But she trod it faithfully. 
<sighs> There's one thing about me, I'm going to trot faithfully. <laughs> like a nice little show pony. <laughs> wow. Um, you've got the best of me tonight. That <laughs> never, never getting farther than that. So I guess that's, that. that's where we got to end it. I'm speaking for Caroline. I don't know what we're doing next week for our episode. I don't think either of us know. We shall see when that happens. I feel like it's going to feel like tomorrow that we have to record it. So, yeah, yep. sure will. It'll happen. It'll happen. In the meantime, go get a rock. Go get a pet rock or a I border have a collie. pet rock that I made in the second grade. Oh. It's painted to look like, guess what? A hedgehog. A hedgehog. <laughs> That's so on brand. Wow. I love that for you. <laughs> What's its name? You know, I can't remember. I did write a whole story about it, though, because we had an assignment where we went mm. to the computer lab and had to write a story about our pet rock. And the thing about me is um, I wrote chapters. Most uh. people wrote a short story and were done because we were like second graders. Not me. And yet you can't remember it. Tis no. a shame. It was probably like Rocky Balboa. Well, no, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I was not funny enough to have come up with that. Nor did I know who Rocky Balboa was. Um, <laughs> dang, this is really going to bug me. Raquel. No, it was something hedgehog related. Oh. Like Tiggy Winkle or something. <laughs> Tiggy Winkle? Is that a hedgehog related? Yeah, you know, like Miss Tiggy Winkle, the yeah. hedgehog of Beatrix Potter's stories. Beatrix Potter, the author of Peter oh. Rabbit. I know Beatrix Potter as an entity. Okay. I don't think I've ever dabbled with well, her. Boy, did I dabble. Mm, my dabbler. mom loved Beatrix Potter. I had a whole uh, Beatrix Potter themed bedroom when I was little. Oh, my. Anyway, the hedgehog is named Miss Tiggy Winkle. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot more sense. Or Mrs. Then Rocky. Is this Winkle? It might be Mrs. Oh, oh, she married. I'm I'm blanking. Let's 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 say she's married. She's a conventional hedgehog. I feel like it's Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. That sounds right. Has Tiggy Winkle ever sounded right? I inquired. Yes. <laughs> Tiggy Winkle. Sounds like Tell me that's not an excellent name for a hedgehog. Tiggy Winkle? Tiggy. That Incredible. sounds like two um teletubbies combined. Well, don't <laughs> put some respect on Miss T- Mrs. Tiggy Winkle's name. <laughs> respect. Thank you. I what she deserves. The audacity. I I had like a corduroy. I bet bear. you wouldn't show this disrespect to Jemima Puddle Duck. Um, I I don't know a Jemima Puddle Duck. Well, we have not been acquainted. <laughs> I know a frog and toad. I cannot believe you would know frog and toad and not Beatrix Potter. I just, frog and toad were so prevalent in our elementary school. Frog and toad is something that I have had no contact with until the last few years. Really? I read them all the time. I've never read one. I just know them This is our cultural divide. (laughs) You have frog. (laughs) We're not so different, you and I. (laughs) You have your frog and toad. I have my Beatrix Potter. Apparently, she's. A mafia kingpin. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Don't all mafia kingpins have a hedgehog in their pocket named Mrs. Tinkle Tums? Tiggy Winkle. Tinky. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Tinkle Tums is from Eric Ridley, right? Yes. Okay, I also well, love Tinkle Tums. Tinkle Tums. Well, I can't win them all. And or I've won not a lot them. today. <laughs> and that's another lesson. Sometimes you're just going to lose them all. And you have to just keep on smiling and waving like a penguin. So true. Boom. She's waving, guys. You can't see. But <laughs> I am waving. In your heart. <laughs> in your heart, no, she's waving in a bittersweet in, farewell. In a penguinous fashion. A, a penguinous fashion. Her fingers are together like a little penguin. Like my little flipper. She does have a little flipper. Okay. Um, enough 
Twinkle. What is it called? Tiggy Winkle. Enough tig- tickle tums. Which one? Tiggy. Enough Tiggy Winkling. I do like it as a verb. Thank you. If I could ever remember what it's actually called. Yeah, that would be helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gone again. So have a great weekend. I am so excited for the weekend. I can. Tell. And we'll yeah we'll be gracing your ears in another seven days. So be prepared because honestly, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Somebody's got to be. <laughs> We're certainly not. That's so true. We need you. We need you. <sighs> okay. Well, happy fall, y'all. It's now the second day of fall, so. Oh. Well, on Friday it is. Oh. I was like, <laughs> <"You're> really? <laughs> God, you messed with her. Uh, I'm- uh, the sense of space, whatever that be continuum continuum yeah however that that's would... a bummer for me because i had a post planned for the first day of fall that now doesn't work with my feed because i forgot when the first day of fall was that's okay oh i'll figure something else out well you could do it for the second day of fall so true not as <laughs> doesn't pat quite the punch it but doesn't it doesn't have a little slap. The gravitas that is the gravitas is a little bit gravel okay Bye. That's it. That's all I've got in me. (laughs) That's so true.